Okay, so now we know how to do normal probability calculation, okay? And what I want to show you one more thing is that um, just like in the um, chapter four, we talk about in some cases you can, once the conditions are met, you're able to use Poisson to your proxy binomial. Here, um, sometimes we can also do approximation to the binomial using the normal distribution, okay? And in particular, you will be useful as you will see in an example that yes, even though like for the binomial distribution, let's just look at the PMF one more time really quick, right? It's N choose K, right? And then P to the power of K, one minus P to the power of N minus K, okay? So uh, the PDF, right, is useful for us to compute, uh, PMF, sorry, compute, the probability at each point, okay? But sometimes you might be wondering, okay, what is the probability that X is smaller or equal to some value or between two values and stuff like that? Then that requires you to add up so many different PMF at particular values. So that's why uh, you could be useful to use a normal approximation. Okay, so here on this graph, uh, in this slide, I'm showing you four different um, binomial uh, PMF, right? And uh, we have seen this before. And what I want your attention uh, to be focused on is, as you can see, just like the Poisson approximation that we care about certain uh, conditions, right? Um, here, if we're able to meet the condition, we'll be able to use the normal approximation and to, to help us to understand what the condition is about. If we look at the four different PMF of binomial here. Um, so remember, um, the normal is always, right? Um, bell shaped and symmetric, okay? So among the four, I guess this one is roughly, right? Um, bell shape and symmetric, right? And this one is uh, quite uh, bell shape and symmetric as well, okay? So um, as you can see, um, it's, uh, it's pretty important that like only when the binomial distribution for a particular binomial, right? It is bell shaped and symmetric, okay? Then uh, it makes sense for us to use the normal approximation, okay? So the uh, specific conditions, okay? Is that if X, follows a binomial with NP parameters, okay? If N is large enough or more specifically, so this is the, actually the hard condition that you have to check, okay? If I check N times P times one minus P, if it is greater or equal to 10, then the binomial distribution can be uh, approximated by the normal um, distribution, okay? So specifically, uh, what we're doing is that, well, X, right? X is a binomial, so, if I'm curious about X taking a particular value I, okay? So that is approximate, okay? Can be approximated by a normal distribution with mean N times P and sigma squared N times P uh, times one minus P, okay? So if we're able to compute the mu and sigma for this normal, what this is showing is we're able to approximate the probability of the binomial taking value X uh, with a normal, uh, probability calculation of this y, which is the normal um, random variable between x minus 0.5 and then x plus 0.5. Okay, so we have this little approximation or like a correction. What we mean by here is that, well, you know, if I'm just doing like y, if I'm doing y equals to i, then that's always zero because we know the probability, right, of a continuous random variable taking any value is always zero, okay? So for us, we create, right, like a little interval that we're able to evaluate, and then that will be a good uh, approximation to um, the binomial over here, okay? So to be more, um, um, I guess, more uh, detailed, uh, here we're showing exactly how you can do it in practice, okay? So it looks a little bit complicated, but in practice, it's much easier to do, as you will see in a second in the example. So the probability, of x, okay, so x again, x is the binomial, okay? So x is between a and b, okay, including, okay, over here, okay? Then for us, the approximation should go as, if I'm looking at y, right, y is the normal. So in order to include the point at b, I do a correction of plus 0.5, okay? And then also to include the point, the value at A, I do a correction of minus 0.5. Okay, so this is because if I'm doing a graph, okay, let's just say this is the normal, okay? And let's just say I wanted to know about the probability between A and B here, okay? okay. This is approximation, right? Like the whatever the bar behind it will be uh, the binomial, right? Uh, but here we're using a curve, the normal curve to do the approximation. So the reason why we do a little correction at the end, okay, 
is because, okay, so the probability at this point is always zero for a normal, right? For Y, and then at any point I should say it is um, zero. So for us, because X is between A and B inclusive, so we really want to in include this point and this point in our approximation, okay? So because we're looking at the probability between these two points, okay? So it's important in order to include A, we do a little correction to the left so we can include A, right? And then we do for B, we do a little bit um, uh, correction uh, on the right-hand side, which is plus 0.5 to include B, okay? So this is very specific for this example, okay? So once you know this, you're able to use the um, normal prob probability calculation going back to the standard normal. Uh, so we're, at, right, we're doing minus the mu divided by sigma, minus mu divided by sigma, and then you can use this capital feet, right, the PDF, uh, the CDF of the standard normal, okay? Um, but what I wanna say is that here is specific that we're doing this negative five, A minus negative five and P plus, a B plus point, uh, sorry, A minus negative 0.5, so A minus 0.5 and then B plus 0.5, we do this minor correction here because of uh, the fact that we're trying to get the probability between those two points, okay? So, but if I look at another example, okay? What if I want to know everything about A here? Okay, so for me, well, in order to include the point A, right? If I want like say X greater or equal to A, that's the probability. Then I do a little correction of A minus 0.5, okay? Yeah, so it really depends. Here is between A and B, okay? And then we do that correction. Here is greater or equal to A, so we do this correction. All right, so with all this in mind, let's look at example and you'll get more practice in the um, live session exercises. The ideal size of a first year class at a particular college is 150 students, okay? The college knowing from past experience that on average only 30% of the accepted for admission will actually attend. Um, so they are um, using a policy of approving the applications of 450 students, okay? So I, I guess that's how they roughly come up with the probability, right? Like say uh, the number because they they have 40, uh, like they want to admit 150 in, like they want 150 to be enrolled, okay? So, uh, because roughly it's about 30% gonna um, accept. So if they bump up to uh, the number of approval, uh, approving of the applications is 450, then 30% of that is uh, roughly 150-ish, okay? So the question here is compute the probability that more than 150 first year students are actually gonna attend this college, okay? All right, so um, how do we get started? Okay, so for each student, okay, we know that it's about 30% chance, let's just say it's 30% chance for each admitted student to attend, okay? And then they um, approve for 50 students, right? So this, if you think about it, uh, is actually a binomial random variable, okay? With n equals to 450 and p equals to, the success probably is 0.3, okay? So if we phrase in that way, hopefully it makes sense to you, then, we're asked for getting this particular probability because it's more than, sorry, let me do, yeah, correct here really quick. Okay, just do more than, not greater or equal to, just greater than, okay? And I'll correct that before I upload the slide. Um, so here, okay, we're trying to figure out the probability of X is greater than um, uh, 150, okay? So that is, uh, well, if we are trying to do a, uh, the PMF of, uh, Bonomio, that's the one that I was talking about, complicated, because then involves you calculating P151, uh, P152, up to P45, 4, 450, and then add all of them up. Or if you want to do in the other way, it's one minus P0, P1, but whichever way you're going to do, it's going to be complicated because you have to do a lot of summation, okay? So this is where the normal approximation can come into really handy, okay? So if we want to use it, Let's first of all, check the conditions, okay? The conditions that we know is N times P times one minus P, okay? Which is 450 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 is 94.5 greater or equal to 10. So this is, um, the condition is met. So we're going to use a normal approximation, okay? So to do the approximation, okay, just to um, make sure that we will be on the same page about the correction, the little correction we're gonna do, right? So uh, it's at, let's see, the mean, I think it's um, four, uh, 450 times 0.3, okay? 
And then we want to do, and that value, uh, let me do a calculation really quick, 450 times, sorry, 0.3. Uh, okay, it's 135, so let me, let me erase this. Okay, it's 135, that's the mean, okay? All right, so the question, right, we're trying to, sorry about the typo, this is uh, strictly greater than 150, I think that's what I was um, trying to um, do the calculation based on the question, because it's more than 150 students, okay, so I will correct that again. So we are looking at 150, let's just say roughly over here, okay, and then we're looking at the probability over here, okay, and specifically, right, because this x is greater uh, 150, not greater than equal to, just greater. So meaning that we do not want to include this point, okay? So when we do not want to include this point, okay, so this is another example compared to before, okay, is that, well, instead of um, doing 150, I should do a plus 0.5 so I can ignore this point, okay? Or maybe another way you can think about it is that we want to get this, right? So that will be approximately x greater than 151 minus 0.5, okay? So pretty much um, you can think about it either way. Either I want to be strictly larger than 150, so I'm gonna do a correction with the plus 0.5, so I do not include that point. Or if I'm um, looking at, I definitely want to include 151. So in that case, I will do a correction of minus 0.5, so I'm able to include 0 .5, uh, 1, 150 at that point, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. And then if you go this way, you will see that uh, eventually um, I'm going back again to the standard normal, right? So like, I know this is what I need to do. And then I have um, the mean, right? N times P of the um, normal. And then the standard deviation, the variance I would say is N times P um, times one minus P, take the square root of that. And then I'm doing the correction of 150.5. Okay, so eventually I'm gonna get, uh, I need to compute the probability of Z is greater than one point. 59, so if you go to the table, okay, uh, you will see that whatever the value that gives you, right, is only the CDF up to that point, okay? So in the red, uh, in the blue color, uh, whatever the value that you're find, finding, which is 0.9441 on the uh, normal standard normal table only gives you the area on the curve uh, shaded in blue, okay? But we want the red part, okay? So you're gonna use one minus that to do that calculation. Alrighty, so to recap, okay, we talk about normal distribution with two parameters, mean and standard deviation or the variance. Okay, mean is mu, variance sigma squared. It's symmetric, okay, so if you actually want to uh, play with all of the CDF and PDF, you can always uh, figure out all of this as well, like what we're showing over here. Um, but then uh, I would just also just highlight that we uh, also learn about the standard normal distribution, okay, uh, with mean zero and variance one, okay, and then the standardization um, helps us to do a lot of uh, calculation, okay? So like standardization goes this way. So you have Z equals to X minus mu divided by Sigma. Okay, so once you do that, you get back to a standard normal. Okay, and then in fact, we use this fact, if you remember to show the mean and variance, okay, of a normal distribution. So make sure that you know how to do those. And then lastly, um, to find probability using the standard normal table. Um, this is a generic result that we're showing, uh, but uh, but you can always um, do it in the practice, like in the actual application, I think it usually makes much more sense. Lastly, you can do a normal approximation to binomial when the conditions are met, okay? But don't forget to do the uh, small correction depending on exactly what your, uh, what area of, under the curve, the, what side of the area under the curve, I guess, um, that you're trying to compute. Okay, lastly, Oh, I think I have one more slide. Yeah, just like really two continuous distributions that we covered in this chapter. Um, and this is a table of showing uh, their name, range, PDF, and then mean and variance. Okay, so we learn about uniform and then we learn about normal.